Hello world, this is Random Fix, and if you're new to the camper build idea and you are starting out your plumbing journey, I'm gonna go ahead and make this easy and show you guys what I did as I found some plumbing setups really complicated and I wanted the simplest, easiest system that had heated water and had filtered water with a large capacity. So that's what I'm gonna cover in this video today. And I'll show you guys my van and how I did everything. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we are talking about plumbing and camper vans. So I'm gonna show you guys my setup here. And this is my 2019. 907 170 wheelbase sprinter here. I have a kitchen galley with a sink, a bathroom with shower, and an outdoor shower in the back area. And let me show you guys the whole setup now. So this is my setup in the back area and then I'll take you towards the front. So we have a 12 volt water pump right there. The accumulator that comes automatically prefabbed on the board. It has just a simple negative and positive connection on the left hand side that you just have to go ahead and twist into place. And that board is strapped to a 30 gallon fresh water tank here that is connected to a water heater right here. And when it comes down to plumbing guys, the connections are really not going to be a simple subject. So I'm going to go and talk a little bit more about this behind a computer screen. And let's go ahead and just do a quick little analysis of the setup. So my fresh water comes in through this port right here. On the interior, I have a little on and off lever right here. It's gonna be a PEX, and this is gonna be a half inch pipe right here. And it goes into the top of the tank. And then I have the tank venting up here to where the water heater goes and it goes into the panel, which has automatic drain out the side of the van to the atmosphere. So in case the water pressure here gets too much, it'll blow through this hose. In case the tank needs to vent, it'll vent through that same hose, so I don't have to make two holes. And then we have the outlet right here. So I have one outlet, and from here the water goes into the 12 volt pump and that 12 volt pump will push it into this Bosch water heater. And this is a 120 volt connection right here. And if the water heater is not on, it will just simply bypass it. So it's gonna come in through this line and it's gonna exit through that line. If the water heater is on, it will go ahead and let out hot water. If the water heater is off, it will go ahead and basically just allow the room temperature water to go to that outlet and that outlet goes forward to the shower and also back here to the outdoor shower so a very simple connection and then my connections back here are going to be this quick port connections so you just basically plug them in and they twist in so it's not going to leak any water all over your van and for the cold water it has a bypass so before it goes through the tank and collects more residue or anything else that is not good for your health it'll go through bypass it here and it'll go straight into the kitchen and in the kitchen i'll show you guys that there's basically going to be a water filter and when i have cold water running it's filtered and when i turn the lever up like i'm pushing out hot water it will go and let the unfiltered water come through here and that is going to be my very simple connection back here and i'll give you guys a few more minutes if you guys want to take a look at it so water comes in goes in the tank comes out here goes in the 12 volt pump pump pushes it through here one branch goes to the sink and once it goes to the water heater and the water heater does not have to be on it will go through the shower and one thing i wanted to talk about is going to be these angles they're 90 degree angles so in case you don't want to use these 90s like this these elbows you can use this and i actually like this method better as there's going to be two less connections than this and a lot less chance of a leak and one thing i want to talk about this pex half inch is make sure guys that you do not get the rolled up stuff from the store and I'll cover that with you guys now. 
So when I first got the van, I went to the store, I got the rolled up pack, and this comes in blue and red. I just decided to use red for the whole thing as I don't find a reason to carry two different colors for me since the red is gonna be good enough. And when you use this straight stuff here, this is very easy to work with and you don't have to worry about any kinks. If you twist this too much with that, that elbow, this will go ahead and collapse on you and then you're gonna have an issue. So either go with the 90 if you're willing to make two extra connections or go ahead and use that 90 degree support that I showed you guys a little bit earlier. And that is gonna be a much easier way. And I'll have a link to this in the video description as well as the cutters and the kit that comes with everything that you need. Now that we know how to avoid making two extra connections like this by simply going through a 90 degree bend, which is gonna support it and keep it from collapsing. Let's go ahead and talk about how these hoses are actually held on. So I've got this kit and this kit is amazing because it comes with everything that you need to go and strap everything down in all the different sizes that you need were included in here. So this is gonna be the back area set up over here. And if you guys notice, there's gonna be this foam insulation. So behind this foam insulation, I do have a water heater pad for this tank as well as this tank down here. So in case I go to a region where it's really cold, those will turn on after the temperature drops below 45 degrees. I have a switch for them. I do wanna mention when I go to an area like the snow, the water in here stays pretty room temperature and I have had no issues so far, if that is a concern to you guys. And now let's check out how the kitchen galley and shower are all configured. So we're in the sprinter now, and this is gonna be the kitchen area. I have my sink, and the water pressure is really good. And this water pressure is not currently on because I have the pump off. So that accumulator will help you with some reserve pressure like this. And the reservoir is amazing because you don't have to worry about that pump turning on every single second. You need a little water pressure. So I highly recommend a pump and an accumulator and the water comes from the back to the front here through this area right here on the sides so let me turn on the lights really quick so my lights are on now and you guys can see that the water tank is there and here are going to be my shutoff valve so i have a shutoff valve for the shower up top and one for the kitchen galley so just in case i'm on the road i need to shut anything off i can and one thing that's really important when you're buying these brass fittings for your plumbing Make sure that they're actually food grade because a lot of the stuff you're going to find online on Amazon and different places, they're not going to be actually for human consumption. So that is something that you should really watch out for. And I highly suggest putting some emergency shutoffs in. And once they go past the shutoffs, what happens, they go down and through these floor boxes, they make it into the kitchen galley or the shower. And these are really easy to go ahead and remove. They basically just rock back like this and they pop up. And all my hoses are down there. So I use these servo valves or some specialty valves that basically keep the water from being able to go back the opposite way. In all honesty, you don't need it, especially for the kitchen, as I will show you guys a trick around that. However, I do have them installed in here and they work pretty well. And this is all accessible from the inside. So I did not have to make a hole through here or a hole through the floor of the van to get the water back. So that worked out really well for me as I did not want a bunch of holes in underneath here. So in here we can see that the red line comes in and it goes two different ways. The cold line or the one with the blue color right there goes into the water filter and back up. And the same thing for the red. The red comes right off the red line and goes up and up here in the kitchen area when i go down this is filtered and this is not filtered so the water filter is a five micron filter and it's absolutely amazing and the water tastes very good and clear i have had no issues and let me show you guys how this works on the bathroom side so here's my bathroom so i have my wet toilet so in case i want to shower with this in here it's not a problem there's no orders if you guys want to check out the review about this, I will have a link in the video description as it certainly beats having to make a hole in the side of your van and it's a lot more convenient. Nonetheless, 
the water comes in. It's got a quick connector, goes through this shower head, which has great shower pressure. And I also use it to go ahead and fill up the water in here. So it comes with a little adapter and that is very easy. Now I don't have to carry water from the outside to here. And the other thing that's nice about that particular quick connector is I don't have to worry about a water mixer. So what I did is I use the Bosch water heater setting to control the temperature on my shower. If you're putting a shower in a van, the water mixer is going to take about four inches. And I got to tell you guys, four inches in a van is so much space. So it was really important for me not to give up that four inches. So I went ahead and built it down here. So it's right behind here. And again, it's protruding into the space. However, the space is basically not useless as now. It's a step. I can step on here. The kids can step on here to get onto the beds. It's very accessible. I will show you guys all the valves. And this is what it looks like underneath with the cover missing. So again, it's protected. There's gonna be my quick connection port. And again, I'm not giving up any valuable space. And my shower water is gonna go ahead and empty through here down to this line. And it goes out the middle of the van, which I'll show you guys how it exits the van later on. If you guys are interested in these boxes, look how simple these are. Basically, they are just little steps that you can use and cover up your very essential and sensitive plumbing and get a nice step. And you avoid taking up any space at waist level by losing an extra four inches here. This space is now saved and everybody's a happy camper. And I wanna show you guys what it looks like with the water pressure at full blast. So this is the filtered water. Great water pressure and the same thing for the shower. And let me show you guys how the water exits the sink. So underneath the sink, we have one of these Camco RV sink drains. And these are really cool as they just twist on. If you're worried about any odors, go ahead and just make this loop a little higher. So that way there's always a little water sitting here and no odor can come back. And I absolutely love this. Down here, you got a very simple connection to the drain. And now let me show you guys the area where the water is gonna go ahead and drain out of. All right, so we are underneath the bed area and you can see that the shower water goes into that 90 right there. And right in front of the subwoofer, there's gonna be another spot where there's a hole that goes down underneath the van. And the water from the sink comes out and they both meet up right where that K is for kicker on the ground area and it drains. And it drains out right there underneath the van and then goes through one of those valves again in case you're really worried about any kind of odor. I went ahead and covered up those hoses with that foam insulation that you get at Home Depot and goes in right there. This is the entrance point and this right here is gonna be the exit and the exit or drain, whatever you wanna call it, is gonna be right here. It's gonna be one of these electronic waste gates. So whenever it has power, it will go ahead and open up. The water is gonna drain. I did build in some safety precautions, such as a switch that will power this on. I have a 90 degree blocker right here. So if I wanted to drain it, I can go ahead and just turn it like that once that's open. And lastly, I have a cap on here, which is just a quick connector. And I can come in here and connect just a regular garden hose, go into a clean out at a campground, at your house, wherever you're at, and drain right there. And so far, everything's worked out perfectly. So that is gonna be the drain and a very simple explanation of my plumbing system. If you guys got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask down below. And as I drain the tank here for the last time, because the new owner is picking it up, guys, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you guys are thinking about building a camper van, do yourself a favor and do it, guys. It's been an amazing experience. And I'm going to have links to all the very popular connectors that I use. Like this is a banjo connector right here. You cannot find it in the store. You can only get it on Amazon, which really sucks when you're short by one. And if you ever need to drain it, this is the ultra low-tech drainage 
and my grass is dying. So I'm actually gonna use this water to go and put it on my lawn as it's just gray water from the sink. And this is why you wanna build in a redundancy. So in case you're full, you don't have to run back inside and hit that switch. And while the water is draining, I did want to show you something. When I turn on the water pump here, obviously besides getting water at the faucet, this also powers up all the levels. So this is my clean water. And this is my gray water. And they're backlit. And right now the tanks are almost empty. And I'll show you guys the sensors. So this is still draining. This is my water conservation for California as it's crazy. The prices for water have gone up twice in the last year. This is insane. Nonetheless, let me show you guys the water level sensors and there are gonna be right there. The gray part between the two red pipes, that's gonna be the water level sensors and they work really well. And this is how I fill up the water tank. So I go ahead and connect the quick connector here. Open up that valve. I turn that valve clockwise so it goes and allows the water to go in now. Grab my water hose, put it in the quick connector. Once the valve is opened up, I like to enjoy some boba. You can see the water level is right there. And it helps if you have a flashlight as you'll get better visibility. You can check the gauges. But I like being over here, so that way I don't overfill it. While boba is good, do not get distracted and let this overfill, as that would be very, very bad. Hey everybody, I wanted to make this as simple as I could for you guys. So I'm gonna give you guys my shopping list and what stuff I bought. You will find links to this in the video description box down below the same exact order. So this is the sink that I got. And again, the sink is just a drop in. If you're gonna go ahead and use butcher block, you cut out the square, it comes with a template. It's an amazing and basically rust proof sink as it's all stainless steel. This is gonna be the crimping tool that I used to go ahead and make all my connections for the pecs. So it's gonna come with the cutters and also the crimping tool. And you can grab extra crimps like this at the hardware store in case you run low. This is gonna be the Bosch water heater that I used. And this is how I control the temperature for my shower. And I eliminated the need for a mixer. And this is my faucet and my kitchen galley. And I'll have a video link down below about the kitchen galley and how I made it for cheap. And these are those valves that I talked about that actually prevent the water from flowing the wrong way and also keeping odors down. If you're worried about odors in the kitchen area, you really don't have to because you can just make a loop like I showed you guys in the video. So this might be a little overkill. This is gonna be the connection for my outdoor shower and also for my interior shower. And you can just buy this tip, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. In case you guys wanna go ahead and put on a fancy shower head, you can. These are the 90s right here for the pecs, and it's going to come with a nice assortment of 90s and also tees. These are really nice to go ahead and have, as a lot of times you're making connections to a drain, and these were very useful, and I would highly suggest one set of these. And this is the water level sensors right here, and they come in different sizes, so depending on which fresh water tank you grab, you can go ahead and grab the appropriate length. And I also installed one on my great water tank as well. And this is going to be the water level gauge. And this was used for my clean water. And I use this one right here for my gray water. And this is going to be my 12 volt water pump. So this is what I was talking about that it came all assembled. So as you can see, everything's pretty much ready to go. It has a strainer attached and you just connect it to a board and you're ready to go. There was really no vibration and it was an amazing price. And I'm really happy that I found this. I did not make any alterations to the accumulator pressure here as it worked perfectly out of the box. These are going to be some connections you're going to want to have for the water heater up top. These are going to go and basically thread onto there. And then you're going to connect your PEX right here. And this is going to be that water drain 
for the sink and this is going to go twist onto that sink and this other part right here is going to connect to the drain edge which i'll show you guys those hoses so here's going to be some drainage tube that i used and the bigger the tube is the better water flow you're going to have out of the van so keep that in mind if you're not limited by size you want to go with the bigger size whenever available and some of these sizes may not be available in your local stores so make sure you shop ahead this is that banjo connection i was talking about this is not sold in stores so you want to go ahead and load up on these get yourself a few extras i had to order multiple times this is going to be that water release valve that i showed you guys in the back and this is really highly recommended and i really think this is probably the best water solenoid on the market here's another banjo this is going to be a different size so you want to make sure you get the right sizes for your project this is going to be my shower drain and the nice thing with this is it doesn't take a lot of space and so if you don't want to drain straight through the floor of the van this is going to be a great alternative as in my case i only made one hole through the middle of the van and these are going to be the hose clamps and they come in a variety of different sizes and this is a lot cheaper than going to the store and buying piece by piece this is going to be my fill port for my water here's another banjo valve right here this is a 90 and these are going to be some nice bushings and the bushings are basically going to allow you to take a big size and make it smaller when needed so you just choose the right size for your project and a lot of this stuff is not available in store so you want to go ahead and plan ahead and i'm going to give you guys some tips about plumbing towards the end of this video this is going to be my connection for the outdoor shower and also for the bathroom and this is how I avoided giving up that space on the interior because my water heater is going to be hooked up to here directly and I use the water heater temperature setting as my mixer. This is going to be the rocker switches that I use for my water pump and all the different accessories in case you guys are looking for something like this. I had really good results with this and it was very easy to go ahead and connect. These are the straps that I use. So sometimes you're not going to be able to go ahead and screw into a component like the water tank. So I went ahead and strapped my 12 volt water pump to the tank and it comes with all the different attachments included. This is the sleeve that I used when I made the hole through the van and I ran the wires right through here. I didn't want the wires touching any metal components as eventually that will go ahead and cut into the wire so this made it nice and convenient for me to go and do that and this is the hose that i use for the shower drainage as you can see this is a one inch and it allows for plenty of water flow i basically got this particular component and took this off and attached the shower head and hose right to here and basically scrap this remaining piece as I just needed this particular component. So if you guys wanna do that, this is what you would need. And at the time when I bought this, this was like $13. So now it's gone to 23. This is gonna be my water filter and this is gonna be the five micron water filter and it did a great job and I was really happy with the results. These are gonna be my shutoff valves for my water lines to the shower and also to the kitchen. And this is what you need for the sink area to connect to the drainage. And these are the quick connectors that I used to fill up the water port. There's gonna be that redundancy shutoff valve in here. So if you turn that sideways, the water will basically stop flowing and it's really nice. And I continue to use these as the quality is second to none. Now, like these zip ties, it kept some of the piping and things in place. Go ahead and take a look at this. If you guys find other ones that are, could work better, please leave it down in the comment box. This was the shower head that I used. And as you can see, it's got these tiny little holes. However, in the van, it gives you amazing water pressure. I've actually changed over all my shower heads at my house to this just because of the water prices in California and the water pressure is really great inside the van and also in the house.
It does have a one press stop over here, which is really nice in the van. If you don't want to use a lot of water, you can go ahead and soap up, hit the stop button. And when you're ready to rinse, you can just go ahead and rinse off without wasting any water. For your shower area, if you want to go ahead and make a little water barrier, this is what you would use and it's cuttable. So you can go ahead and customize it to the length you need for the toilet. Make sure you guys get this toilet seal. Without this, your toilet is gonna go ahead and fail within three months. This is something I highly recommend and it'll cost you about $8 a year. And I do it every three months. I just drop it in there, let it sit for a couple of days and it keeps that seal nice and tight and no orders can come up. And these are what I recommend dropping in the particular toilet. If you guys get a cassette style toilet, as we'll go ahead and break everything down. And it's a lot better than vinegar, as vinegar goes and basically destroys the seals in your toilet. And this is the toilet that I recommend. And I use this on my 24 state trip. And I really like the idea that I can go and dump anywhere into a regular toilet. I didn't have to find a specialty dump and it was very easy to manage the kids liked it i didn't have one bad experience with this yet this is the base for the toilet and for the shower area this is going to be the pan that you can use in case you guys do want to make yourself a shower in the van or a bathroom this is what i recommend and on top of this what you can do is you can go ahead and use the decking boards if you want to keep your feet off this that will go ahead and let all the dirt and grime fall to the here and then you can go ahead and have a nice base for that toilet to go into here and you can go and screw right into there without having to worry about damaging this and this is the shower stall that I use with that pan and it fit right in there and everything worked really well so before I let you guys go I wanted to give you guys some tips whenever possible you want to go ahead and grab a plastic male and go into a metal female if you grab a metal male and go into a plastic female you can oftentimes break it or rip the thread apart that's something that i would highly go and encourage and also with the pecs you can go with shark bite which is basically the snapping connector or you can go with the crimp i highly suggest going with the crimp for the van as you can visually see that it made a good connection and it's not going to go and break on you once you're on the road Whenever you're looking for connectors for your piping, because you're going to be making a lot of trips to the hardware store, you just want to get familiar with this. This is NPT, stands for National Pipe Thread. And there's going to be the male and female. And then you also got male and female thread. So keep that in mind. And I'm here to answer any questions for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching.